Hi there, thanks for clicking on my video today. As you can see, this is my Strawberry iMac G3, and this is my third video in the Sorting Out the iMac series. This video was shot on September 5th, 2019, and it's my second attempt. Why? Because the first one was crappy, and that's why I'm doing a voiceover. I installed 256 megs of RAM, and I didn't record myself doing that. This is simply to demonstrate how to take one of these apart. I was going to do another video on my Snow iMac, but that's so similar to my Indigo iMac, and it works perfectly, so I don't feel the need to demonstrate that. So this is the final one in the series. And I have the tools here that I use when I do this. You're going to need some kind of Phillips head screwdriver. I have a larger one and a smaller one in this very patriotic flip over style. You're also going to need some kind of plastic pry tool. I use this one for car stereo installs. You might need some needle nose pliers um, as the power supply plug is very hard to remove and you can use one of these to persuade it out if you need to. And you're also going to need the part of the iMac service source manual that deals with this part of the iMac. I'll put a link in the description for that so you can download it and print it out like this. I'm getting ready to take the bottom half off the iMac, but I wanted to do one more thing. The bezel on my CD-ROM drive has come off of the tray and I don't want to bust it anymore. So I'm going to grab my patented drive opening tool and remove it for safekeeping. So all we have to do is uh, pop it off and squirrel the cover away after we open it. And there it is. Now one thing you have to remember about these drives is you can get any color you like. The front of the tray is removable, so if you get a lime CD drive, just whip off the lime button and put your color on. There's no problem. In order to get the bottom of your iMac off, you have three screws. One at the top here, one here, and one here. Please disregard what I just said. The two screws that I pointed at are stand screws. Uh, then what you'll have to do is you'll have to pry the computer apart around here. After you've done all that and pried the case down here and down here, then you can go ahead and lift the bottom off and out. I hope that's helpful for you. So once you get the bottom cover off, you have to remove the cables that connect to the screen, the speakers, and the power supply. This is a standard DB15 Mac video cable. This is the audio cable. And this is the power supply. And I like to use a screwdriver on the video cable. So this video cable just pops right off and we can put it over here. And then, let me zoom back just a little bit. And then we'll take off the audio cable. That's pretty simple. And that's done. Now the power supply has a little clip here. And I don't like to come off. So we'll try without bumping the camera. Dirty perky shark, a back flat, and fortin, fill a bucket, burton, perkaluma, burton, dirt, and bush, and that, and martin, and that, and block a fresh lot, rack and slaughter, back car, and that, cut a back rack a lot. So you have your screws removed here. So all you really have to do is lift up. But it's not that easy, of course. Nothing ever is. So get it up there enough to clear it, grab the optical drive, and then pull. And there is your logic board, your RAM, your pram battery, your optical drive, your hard drive is underneath. All good. So let's take a cut. We'll go ahead and we'll uh, do a close-up and I'll get you into the processor bay. So you really want to know what you're looking at so you don't make the same mistakes that I did. This looks like RAM. It is not. It is uh, SG RAM. It's a video RAM. 
it is not the same as a 144 pin dim this is where the ram is it's also where the g3 and the cache are so we have to take off this cage at least the top of it and then i can show you how to get out the uh, heat sink and the uh, the whole processor card so let me do that and then i'll be right back so it's pretty easy to take off there's three holes that connect to the cage start from the back and work your way forward and you should be fine the cache is here. This is the top RAM slot, which already have populated with 200 or 128 megs of RAM. So we got to get off the the clip that holds the heatsink in place. And to do that, you can use a flathead screwdriver. And all I could, what I like to do is push down a little bit and then pry up. and it will pop off. So here it is. I saved it from a life on the streets. And the heat sink is right here. And it looks loose and not very effective, but it's got some thermal tape here. And there's some thermal tape at the contact point. So you have to to get both sticks populated, you have to take out the whole processor card. So you can use this end of the tool right here, and then just put it up under the processor card, and then give it a yank, and it will pop out. Now, the processor card has two tabs that go in the front of the I.O. cage. So, and then there's two places where, or uh, two slots where the processor goes. And this is the actual G3 right here. So, now I've already got this, sorry about that, I've already got this populated with a 256. So, getting this back together is pretty much the reverse. So, you want to put those two clips there and drop it down, and you'll feel it kind of engage the top of the slots, and you can press down, and that's on there. And then you don't need to clean this, just put it back on. that's all together and then we put the cage on so it's all back together so now we've got to put the logic board and everything back of the Mac and that's pretty much the reverse of what we just did so I'm gonna do that and the next time you see it the Mac will be all back together and ready to go all right see you in a minute Okay, I just wanted to let you know before I started the Mac up that when you put the connections, whatever connections you're going to put, like on my case I've got an external CD writer and a network and uh, my keyboard, that it goes through one of the holes on the side, not through the hole in the middle. This is the finger hole to pull the thing open. So, pedantic Mac fan rant over. Okay, so here we go. Things all buttoned back up. Um, we're going to try booting it. And um, just to let you know, this is not the first boot. I wanted to make sure that the camera settings were correct before I actually did something. It does work. So we're going to see it in action though here. You'll get to see it too. And then we'll look at the CD-ROM and make sure it works and 
and everything should be good. Okay, so here we go. We're going to do it from the keyboard. And that's a good sound, of course. I've changed over to my iPhone because it has better shutter control. Also, I can change exposures and things while I'm in the camera. And this machine has 8.6 and it's not getting anything else because uh, 8.6 will run after dark. So there that goes, so that's good. So let's do an about this Mac and to get everything in place. Stuff at Expander has to start up. There we go. Back to the finder. About this computer. Mac OS 8.6, 256 megs, 257 megs for virtual memory. Largest unused block 222. Stuff at Helpers using 8. Mac OS is using 31.4. So that's good. And then we can go to the system profiler. And we have 256 megs of built in memory. And the reason I'm running on 256 is because I want to run after dark really quick. And where was it last time? Well, I like Spock. Yes, those love spores are pretty good. Here comes the Horda. I notice the Horda comes right before the control strip. It's kind of neat. So that's good. I have After Dark turned off right now so it doesn't interfere. So let's do this. Let's take a CD. Here's a disc that does work. That's the Star Trek Encyclopedia. So let's try that. No, that works. So let's start her up. Make it so. like a data terminal on Starship. <laughs> no, I don't want to. Lieutenant Commander Albert. Dang. Uh, let's look at my favorite episode. I run this under Mac OS X in classic mode and it just isn't as good. There we go. The Doomsday Machine. That is my favorite episode. Just to show you that it all Please works. Please confirm memory alpha deactivation request. And then Simon and Schuster Interactive took you right out of it. So that is the Strawberry iMac. It is done.
It is done. There we go. And the CD drive works after a fashion. So, I have one more iMac, my Snow iMac. Not going to do that one. It's so close to my Indigo iMac that it's not even worth doing. Um, the only thing that I could do on that, and I'll do it on a separate video, I have an iSight camera, and it's the bare minimum to run an iSight camera. It's a 600 megahertz G3. So that's probably where we'll go with that one, but for now, this is done. The other thing I wanted to show you was is that I also have this guy over here, which is an LG DVD, not, not a DVD burner, I'm sorry, it's an LG CD burner in a QPSQ enclosure. This is the only way that I can burn CDs on this guy. So, um, yeah, it's not bad. Well, actually, it's pretty neat. Uh, I like the enclosure. It came out when the blue, when the Bondi Blue iMac came out and the blue and white G3s. And there's a FireWire version of this and there's uh, this USB version. And the, the seller changed out the uh, Q drive in it. Q was a division of Plextor, so it would probably have had a Plextor drive in it, which would be awesome. But anyway, so video over. Thank Christ. Like, comment, subscribe. Thanks for watching. Bye.